is a boss in Elden Ring that you might not ever come across if you're just doing the main story. He's not an actual story boss, however he's one of the hardest in the whole game. And for looking online, people don't recommend to go up against this boss until you're at least level 70. However, don't worry because in today's video I'm not only going to show you where to find Radan, I'm also going to show you how I defeated him at just level 40. And then as a bonus right at the end I'll show you how to get both his weapons and his armour to make you look like the best looking Elden Lord out there. So let's start off by talking about how to go about starting this boss fight. So you need to go into a castle and to do that you need to go to Kaelid which is the very left hand side and you're going to want to go all the way down the bottom of Kaelid. You'll see a site of grace called the Impassable Great Bridge and from there you will see a bridge and if you cross it you'll start getting shot at but you'll also see a portal on the very left hand side of that bridge. If this portal is open for you then simply just travel through it but if it's not then let me tell you how to get this portal activated. Firstly we're going to need to activate the lift of Dectus. To do this we need two parts of the Dectus medallion, the left side and the right side. Let's start off by getting the left side of the medallion first. Inside of Limgrave you'll see a site of grace called Fort Height West and you're going to want to travel there and go to Fort Height itself. Inside of this castle you're going to want to make your way through, run past all of the enemies until you get to the back where you start running up some wooden stairs. Inside of the tower on the right hand side you'll see a ladder, you're going to want to go up this ladder and climb all the way to the top. Once at the top you'll see a chest and that is where the Dectus medallion left is going to be held. The right side of the Dectus medallion is located in Kaelid and more specifically at the Fort Fire of Sight of Grace. If you watched my previous Elden Ring video then you'll know exactly where this is because this is where the big dragon is that gets you 80,000 runes. From this site of Grace you're going to want to go behind you into Fort Faroth itself and head inside the front door. Once inside there be careful of the hard hitting enemies but you just want to want to make your way to the left hand side of this fort and from there you will see another wooden ladder. Just make your way all the way up to the top and once you get up there another chest will be about and you open that chest and you'll see the right side of the Dectus medallion. Now you've got both sides of the medallion you're ready to access the Grand Lift of Dectus. You're going to want to come to this location on the map and there is a grace site right here for you to get if you haven't already it'll save you travelling through all the enemies that you just ran past to get here. But after that just run up to the lift itself you'll see two statues of some gladiators and then when standing in front of these gladiators you'll get the action to hoist medallion. Once you've done that a cutscene will play and the lift will be accessible to you from now on, you'll be travelled to a different area. Now you can travel all the way back to the impassable Great Bridge and that portal will now be active. Before you go through that portal though we're going to need to get the item that is going to allow us to cheese this boss and get him dead really quickly. So you're going to want to go back to Kaelid and you're going to want to travel the highway all the way to the highway south site of Grace and from there you will be travelling through and you will see a dragon that is lying there and he will aggro on you. Just run straight past that dragon while you're on torrent and go up behind him and you'll see a little cathedral behind him and this is actually the cathedral of the dragon communion and once you're in there you will see a site of grace for you to travel here in the future but you'll also see an altar which allows you to purchase dragon spells. Now all of these spells require dragon hearts to actually purchase but they're not expensive and you can get dragon hearts by killing dragons and if you killed that dragon in the last video that gives you 80,000 runes you actually get 5 dragon hearts from that as well. So you'll see all these spells but the spell we're going to want is rotten breath. This basically applies scarlet rot to any enemy and for as long as it's alive and you're alive it will be dealing constant damage to the enemy. So for Radan, we're going to need to apply two lots of this Rotten Breath for it to start dealing damage because it is a boss and it will start doing a percentage damage to its health. And because Radan's got such a large pool of health, as long as you've applied this Rotten Breath successfully, it will be dealing constant damage to his health pool each second, meaning you'll see quite a large chunk of his health disappear really, really quickly. And that is exactly how we're going to cheese this boss to victory. 
Once you've purchased this spell, you're gonna to wanna to go to the nearest Site of Grace and memorize it and have a finger seal active. You can buy a finger seal at the round table hold if you need to, but you can find them pretty frequently at any trader if you need it. So once you've got a finger seal active and you've got the Rotten Breath memorized, you can actually use this spell just by pressing the attack button. And that's it, we can travel back to the impassable Great Bridge and travel through that portal to get into the castle and start this boss fight. Once you're in the castle, you'll see a ton of friendly NPCs, some of which you may have even seen before. So just start chatting to those and then that you'll see a guy up top giving a speech on how the time has come and this is gonna be the battle of his life and all this sort of stuff. And all you're gonna need to do is walk up the stairs and talk to this guy. Once you've talked to him, a cutscene a play and it'll give you the lowdown on who is Radan and why you've got to kill him, etc, etc. Once you've run through that cutscene, you can go behind him through the castle doors, which will now be open, and you can take a wooden elevator down to the fighting area. And be ready, because this is still going to be quite a difficult fight. And by hard, I don't mean like super hard that you're going to start crying, but I mean you will die quite a few times to learn the process, but hopefully this video is going to make it 10 times easier for you. So once you travel down the wooden lift, you'll see another portal that will transport you straight into combat. As soon as you go through this portal, you will see Radan start shooting really big arrows at you, and you need to roll dodge either through them or around them to dodge these, but you need to keep making your way forward and activate all of the summons that are nearby. You'll see the summons because they glow yellow and gold and you're going to need to summon every single one of them. These are all these friendly NPCs that you spoke to at the party and these are going to be dealing quite a bit of damage and be a distraction for you. So you're going to want to make your way to all of these summon areas and just make sure you avoid the arrows because they will to hit kill you and no matter what your level is it will deal a ton of damage. Once you've summoned a few of your friends, he will change his arrows to fire up in the air and come down in like a row of arrows. These are not as deadly as the purple ones that keep flying at you, but you still need to be careful. My recommendation is travel far away from them and get on torrent and run away as they're coming towards you. After that, all you're gonna need to do is travel up to him because your summons are gonna start attacking him and therefore distracting him. Once he's distracted, go up behind him and apply your first lot of Rotten Breath. After doing this, he will probably aggro on you, so you're going to need to jump back on Torrent really quickly and run away. Once you've done that, you'll need to go back around for round 2, but be patient because as soon as your summons have distracted him again and he's got his back turned to you, that's going to be your best opportunity to apply the second part of Rotten Breath. Once you've done that, you'll see that damage will start to be dealt and this is a good amount of damage and it will take him down to about half health in about a minute or so. All you need to do in the meantime is go to the top of the hill that he's standing on and get the other summon that is there. Right at the top of that hill that is a healer and if you take damage she will start to heal you which is a great thing to have. And while he's taking damage all you're going to need to do is run far away from him and revive your friends if you find that they are starting to die and you'll know exactly where to revive your friends by all of the ghostly banners that are hanging in the sky. Underneath them are the golden summon points and from there you can get your boys back in the fight to become more of a distraction and more of a sacrifice for you. Now Radan has two phases in this attack. So his first phase, he mainly deals actual melee attacks so there's not going to be many ranged attacks for you in this phase but when he gets to about half health that's when he's going to just disappear up into the air and then he'll come back down like a meteor which will one hit you if it does hit you. So while he travels up in the air, the best thing to do is revive all of your friends so they're all back in the fight and ready to attack when he comes back down. You get about 30 seconds to do this, so get on torrent and travel around as quick as possible. When he comes back down, he is in phase two, meaning he's got more ranged attacks he uses gravity balls and all this sort of stuff and all of which are deadly to people of all levels in just one hit so you need to be extra careful and extra patient when applying these rotten breaths. Now when he comes back down you won't be having rotten breath applied again. His second phase you need to reapply two lots of rotten breath for him to start taking damage. So same thing again 
once your summons are starting to just draw his attention go up behind him get off torrent apply the rotten breath run away and then wait he is gonna take a little bit of time before you can apply the second lot of rotten breath all in the while you're gonna be running around quite the distance away from him to revive your friends and as long as your friends are alive they will still be dealing damage to Rodan which is great and then all you need to do is go and apply the second lot of Rotten Breath whenever you get the chance and it may be that you don't get the chance and you just let the guys that are helping you along this fight deal all the rest of the damage because you can just revive them and revive them but if you do get the chance to apply the second lot of Rotten Breath do that and then just run away just stay as far away from him as possible and therefore you'll be out of his range quite a lot of the time just keep reviving all of your friends when they do go down and as long as you've got two lots of rotten breath successfully applied he will die no problem and that is it that is how to cheese this boss once he's defeated not only will you unlock some new areas around the world but you'll also have the opportunity to go and get his armor and his weapons from his death you'll not only get his remembrance but you'll also get 70,000 runes you can use these runes to buy his armor set just fast travel to the round table hold and go to the lady with the two fingers just behind the round table you can go to her and go to the shop and you'll be able to purchase the armor set now the armor set costs in total 36,000 runes to get the whole thing but you've just got 70,000 so that's nice and easy you can just grab them and be on your way that's how you get the armor but you can get the weapons too when you're speaking to her you can go to receive power from remembrance and once you've done that you can select Radan's remembrance power and you can select whether you want the sword or the bow once you've done that you will have one of the two options but the remembrance would have been gone so what you're going to need to do is go and reactivate Radan's Remembrance. To do this, you need to kill a monolith and go inside and reactivate them. There are not many monoliths around, but the one that I go to is at the bottom left-hand side of Limgrave, where the trader is. You'll see him, massive rock guy walking around with a little tower on top of him. To actually bring this guy down, all you need to do is go to the rock's feet and start attacking the little skulls that are on his feet. You'll see that he will then fall to the floor after attacking a few of his feet. You can go inside the door and reactivate Radan's Remembrance. And then you can go back to the round table hold and that lady with the two fingers and get the other weapon that you didn't get. And then you have the bow and you have the sword, which by the way you can dual wield, which is pretty mental and insane. The swords themselves require 38 strength to actually wield properly, but they deal a massive 129 physical damage and they are really really powerful and really cool looking as well the bow a little bit easier to wield you just need 18 dexterity and 22 strength and it is just as powerful with 120 physical and you get two different shot types with this you can shoot his purple arrow straight forward or you can shoot up in the air and have the arrows come back down both of these weapons and this armor really really going to help you travel through the world of Elden Ring not only is the armor one of the best in the game but it's also one of the best looking in my opinion now this video has been chock-a-block with information so if you do need any further help let me know down below in the comments but using this method I was able to kill Radan before I actually killed Godric so yeah that just says something right i was level 40 when i destroyed radan and it was the best feeling in the world and i think i only died like seven times which is not bad at all so if you enjoyed the video a like is always appreciated and subscribe for future content but other than that guys thank you so much for watching till the end and i'll see you in the next video goodbye